In this video, we're going to talk about the differences between AND and OR, which seems fairly intuitive, but it can get you in trouble, and also how those two different statements are represented in your design grid here, and how Access translates those uh, two different statements into SQL strings. I can put a criteria in my design grid here where it says age. I can say the age has to be 27 for the results to come back. If I put another criteria here that says black, that means that the age has to be 27 and the hair color has to be black. And if I put the view here to SQL view, you'll notice here that Access has already built a SQL statement that's basically translated my graphical a query building interface into machine language or uh, a SQL string. So basically it says uh, where the age equals 27 and the hair color equals black. So if I run this query, it's going to give me back one record basically meeting the criteria that I put in there that the age has to be 27 and the hair color has to be black. Now if I go back to the design view, I have a second row here that basically acts as an OR statement. And every single row that I've got in my query grid acts as a separate OR statement here. So uh, I can put in eye color blue on the second row, which basically has put in a second chance criteria for my record set. So what I've done here is I've said the criteria has to be age 27, hair color black, or eye color blue. Now if I run this statement, you'll see much more records coming through. And again, if, you, if I go to view, SQL view, you'll notice that Access has put my extra criteria here in this OR statement and added it to the SQL string. So as you can see, what Access does is it takes your uh, query grid that's basically built for you as a human being that can look at this stuff and make sense of it fairly easily, and it takes what you've done here and translates it into uh, a SQL string, a language that Access can look at and uh, translate. And you don't have to represent your OR statements on different lines. What you can do is you can say black or brown in one criteria box here, and it will do the thing that you ask it to do black or brown. Uh, one thing that you have to be careful though is when do you use and and when do you use or. If I put black and brown, it's going to give me no data. That's because there are no records that actually have a hair color of black and brown. They're either black or brown. Here's another example of how using the wrong statement can get you in trouble here. Uh, I'm going to put in a criteria that says not equals to uh, black. Okay, and that'll give me every hair color that is not going to be black. Okay, and now if I put in or not equal to brown, which a lot of people make this mistake, is basically I'm expecting to say, give me every hair color that's not black or not brown. So if I run this though, it's going to give me everything, including the ones that are black and the hair colors that are brown. So what happened? Well, if I say that I want everything not equal to black or not e equal to brown, they're going to cancel out each other because black is not equal to brown and brown is not equal to black. So what I have to do here is put the AND statement, not the OR statement here. And if I press the Run Query, now I've got everything not equal to black and brown. So just to recap, this query grid allows us to quickly and easily build access queries without actually having to worry about the SQL string in the background. Access will actually keep track of that and build the string in the background. If you go ahead and click on View, SQL View, you'll see that Access has already caught up with this and to totally built the uh, SQL string for us. And also we talked about how to represent the AND and OR statements in uh, your Access queries. You can actually put in the OR statements here uh, inside of your criteria one by one, or you can actually use uh, the separate lines that Access provides you in order to put in an OR statement.